Welcome back. In 2021, the Indian unit of Densu Group was rocked by a series of senior level exits and a lot of rumours and confusion around the fate of agencies and talent within the group. Post this, Densu in India made significant changes and reject its leadership to script a turnaround. But then, Narayan Devanathan, who had taken charge at Densu back then, after all the old and familiar faces had left, also left Densu. Now, after many months restructuring and getting new leaders, things seem to be finally falling back in place for the agency group. Devanathan is also back in office. He has taken up a consulting role as group chief strategic advisor. The agency also appointed Harsh Razdan as chief executive for its South Asia office. This post was vacant since the sudden exit of its former CEO, Anand Bhadkamkar, who quit in September 2021. We caught up with Harsh and he says, firstly, he wants to bring in stability at Densu. Listen in. Harsh, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you. So, taking on a new role at Densu uh, after like what the agency has been through over the past couple of years, almost like an apocalypse, so to speak. Uh, tell us, uh, what were your initial thoughts? What was, uh, you know, your perception of the agency when you decided, you know, to take up this challenge? So, I did know that uh, uh, there were these challenges which were existing, not only in Densu, but generally in the agency world. But I was... Uh, I was actually captivated by the opportunity uh, and the vision which uh, uh, which uh, our Japanese uh, colleagues and my boss Rob had pasted. It was all around the new one Densu, trying to shape the future and not doing what was done only in the past. Hmm. Uh, it connected to a lot of my early experiences and I thought that if you join the two, it will be one hell of a idea. Harsh, now speaking about your earlier roles, uh, you have been with FMCG companies, yes, but your most recent roles, uh, you know, previous roles have been with uh, big consulting firms. How, according to you, uh, were you well placed or set up to take an, a group agency kind of a role within an advertising agency kind of a setup? I understood the client side when I was at PepsiCo hmm. and Unilever. And the experience at Accenture gave me a well-rounded view of digital transformation and what the new age digital looks like. That's what clients are looking forward to. The last uh, five years at KPMG, I was in a client and solutions role, uh, listening to clients, trying to serve their needs through whatever we had at hand. And the biggest learning after coming in here is also that clients have been telling me, listen to us. You people have not been listening to us. Listen to us and work will come your way. So you're telling us the previous leaders were not listening to the clients within Densu. No, I won't say that. I think uh, it's just about the uh, about the feeling that clients have. Perhaps uh, uh, we've not paid enough attention uh, mm. uh, to what the clients are saying. And we assume that the solutions we have are what the clients want. I think at times you may not have the answers. Um, uh, but you should have a discussion. Say this is something I would advise you to get done by X, Y and Z. Mm. But be honest about it. Uh, I don't think most of us, including I, have been honest all time, but I think that's the only way which you can go by. Yeah, and you know, this role that you've taken of a CEO has been vacant since Anand Bhadkamkar left in 2021. So when you joined, I believe in May, uh, what was your immediate mandate when you joined uh, Densu back then? The first thing was stabilizing uh, Densu. We didn't have a CEO for two and a half years, as mm -hmm. you said. Uh, making, feel com making people feel comfortable. Uh, making them feel that there's someone who is going to listen to them. A lot of things happened in the last two and a half years and there was a lot of confusion between the region and the global team and what mm -hmm. they were trying to interpret versus India. Uh, we now have stability. Uh, mm. You see stability in a leadership, stability in terms of how we're going forward, stability in terms of pitch to our clients. I think that was the biggest thing in the first three to four months and now we move on from there. So much of the stability has been achieved. Also some of uh, the old hands like Narayan Devanathan, he has returned although in a consulting role at Densu. Uh, tell us how has the client perception about Densu changed today? There was of course erosion of client trust that we have seen, uh, you know, over the what happened over the events that we've seen over the past two, two and a half years. Uh, so tell us how has the client perception changed? Client perception has remained pretty solid over the last uh, few years, I must say. It's, it has gone down. But, you know, I have uh, visited about uh, 60 to 70 CEOs, CMOs over the last five months. Mm. Uh, each of them say something that, thank you for coming and meeting me. Thank you for telling us the new story about Densu. Uh, thank you for being a different person 
to what we've seen in the general agency world. Uh, and every time we've been called to a pitch, I realized that I thought we were underestimating ourselves. Uh, uh, yes, we've had a few glitches uh, around some losses, but we also had many wins. Uh, some of them we can talk about, some of them I can't. But I think uh, uh, it's been, I've been pleasantly surprised at the kind of brand equity dense we had and the way we are bouncing back. What are some of the wins that have happened over the past couple of months? I know the losses since the start of the year with, you know, some of the bigger ones to name were, of course, Rekit and Maruti Suzuki. Uh, how are you replacing, you know, that lost business? Has uh, anyone, uh, any big client come to replace that? Yeah, lots of them. I think we've had uh, Berger Paints with us, uh, Arithi Birla Capital, hmm. uh, Talk Pharmaceuticals, we were expressed by Daily Hunt, we've got... Uh, a number of other clients which are also sort of falling into our kitty. Yeah, so exciting times for, uh, you know, agency, advertising agency business now. Uh, so much of uptake when it comes to usage of tech, uh, generative AI, AI related solutions. Uh, what is your strategy in that direction? Both, of course, the talent strategy and overall organization strategy. So I think our philosophy uh, very clearly for South Asia will be to be a, a agency which is a, at the intersection of marketing technology and consulting. Uh, Marketing, technology and, and consulting. consulting. That, that's the intersection of sweet spot for mm. us. If you need any help or any discussion around mm. marketing or the tech that deals with it and you want to be talked to, we are the people to go for. If you talk of one level lower, uh, and this is something our, uh, uh, our uh, global president, uh, mm. uh, uh, Hiro San also talks about, we want to be a B to B to S firm, business to business to society firm. Do the right thing for society in everything that you sort of launch. Mm. Uh, have society in mind. Do the right thing for society and start defining your niche when you talk about society. Mm. And the second thing he talks about is being a people-centered transformation company. Mm. And, and, and it's not, it doesn't mean you become an HR transformation company. <laughs> but very clearly, we believe we understand the psyche of our consumers better. Uh, psyche mm. of our clients' consumers better. Psyche of our own people better, psyche of clients people better. Hmm. So try and do something in that space which we know about and hmm. try and build an equity around that. And how are you doing that? Because people uh, problem is one of the biggest problem that this industry faces today and in the past two, two and a half years that we have seen, Densu has lost sizable amount of talent, you know, some renowned names from the advertising industry. So how are you attracting that new talent to Dentsu and also trying to retain the existing talent that has done really well at let's say global awards or you know when it comes to big campaigns. So there's a history in terms of why we lost quite a quite a lot of good talent because uh, we had acquired a lot of companies at one point in time mm. and then we realized that clients were telling us it was getting very complicated for them to understand who to reach out to. If you have mm. 18 or 19 companies and each of them has a CEO and a CMO and a chief people officer it becomes difficult to maneuver. Mm. Uh, Dentsu realized that and decided we'll sort of bucket into a few master brands. Hmm. Yes, it was unfortunately lost some of the talent. Uh, hmm. The current talent, I think, is with us. And you've seen a lot of new people all, also joining us. We've had uh, Joe's Leon joining us. We've had Sanchi joining us. Uh, Narayan, you just mentioned. And a lot of people started to come back seeing the vision that hmm. we have. Youngsters, and I think that's the big uh, thing we're trying to solve for very clearly. Uh, we are trying to do a lot of different things. For example, we've launched something called as the Next Generation Council uh, mm. in our in our company. There are strategic uh, strategic things that I'm working on. We picked up 30 of the young and budding leaders, mm. divide them into teams, and they work directly with the leadership team. Mm. Uh, they feel involved uh, 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 in sort of creating the new Densu. For example, we had uh, this experience center come up. Um, uh, I said, let's get them involved. Let's get our design team involved and design something which they want. Uh, mm. Let's not get outside architects to design it. Let people own mm. uh, what they're doing. So we're trying to pull them together, uh, trying to make them feel a part of Densu. That doesn't mean we are ready for the future. Mm. This is sort of just getting them engaged into the current. We will have to look at a lot of upskilling, lots of upskilling. Uh, we'll have to pick on people from outside the industry and mix and match them mm. uh, to create the new Densu. At the same time, I believe that youngsters will learn much faster than me, for yeah. sure. Uh, if I give them a chance, they will do much, much better than all of us. Really. Yeah. So, you know, when I had joined this industry and, you know, even till last couple of years, my perception of Dentsu has been like, you know, this aggressive person. I'm glad you brought up acquisitions, uh, you know, aggressively acquiring uh, tech forward, you know, tech, uh, like, you know, digital organizations, startups, 
very very aggressively uh, as a leader and as a new leader of Dentsu what is the direction that you want to take going forward so it's a very interesting question you say because i think we've reached a stage where we've got a reasonable degree of capabilities so we have a two pronged approach one is grow organically uh, and nurture existing talent uh, and and keep growing at a particular place we are still in search for acquisitions uh, in the new age digital tech marketing domain uh, and we will pick up companies which fit our strategic needs uh, but this time it will be calculated uh, uh, movements in direction rather than the rapid aggressive acquisitive company that you talked about great thank you so much thanks for joining us today thank you very much for joining with that it's a wrap on story about this week you can catch all of our content on facebook twitter and youtube thanks for watching we will be back same time next week see you soon